Good morning legends, what is going on? Welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. Now today's video is gonna be a little bit different to what was expected because four weeks ago, I set out to do a four week mini cut. However, that cut has come to an end a little bit sooner than expected. And I'm gonna to explain to you guys exactly why that is throughout this entire video. I'm also gonna share with you today's full day of eating because there's been a huge calorie change and carb change. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I eat today and explain to you why the cut has come to an end. And it's gonna be very interesting. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Right, first things first, my friends, is the ghost greens. Every morning, one scoop of ghost greens. I'm telling you now, it is an absolute game changer whether you're bulking or cutting. This is gonna aid your digestion, and I'm telling you now, you're gonna feel a ton better. So go and get yourself some ghost greens. You know the drill. Code Kieran saves you 20%, but it's not even that. It's gonna save your insides, so go and get it. Once the greens is in the bag, we can then move on to the coffee. For some reason, I don't know why I've done this, but I've, for some reason, decided to drink instant coffee again. And I don't know why. I've gone off a coffee machine with the Nespresso pods, I don't know why. So I'm literally having one scoop, it's actually decaf coffee as well, because I don't actually need the caffeine in the morning. I think it's just a psychological thing that people say you need the caffeine to wake up. I need the taste of coffee, and I feel wide awake anyway. I also have like a teaspoon of sweetener in it, and then some milk, so coffee's up next. Mm. Beautiful. Right, meal one is going to be 714 calories, 107.6 grams of carbs, 15.7 grams of fats, and 33.3 grams of protein. Meal one is, or half of meal one is going to be two egg whites, one whole egg, boiled half a wholemeal bagel with 20 grams of full sugar jam and then half of meal number one is again is going to be 66 grams of oats that's just because how the packets weighed cinnamon sweet cinnamon flavor by the way from quaker oats is unbelievable i know you americans watching this now can get mad flavors over there you can get like the cinnamon toast crunch flavor which is unbelievable this is the closest thing i can get to that in the uk so sweet cinnamon by quaker sachets unbelievable I then got 15 grams of peanut butter and 120 grams of banana, which is a great little sort of sweet tooth um, half the meal. So that is gonna be meal number one. I love to keep my foods as super clean as I most possibly can, even when I'm bulking. Yes, you can get away with it. When you're bulking, you can eat obviously a lot higher calorie, a lot of food, stuff like that. The problem is when you start eating high calorie foods, the quantities aren't as big, really, and it's mainly because the fats are so high. I find it so easy to get the right amount of fats in my diet, but I would rather get my fats from peanut butter and egg yolks. I've only taken two egg yolks out uh, on this breakfast because I know later in the evening, I'm gonna wanna have some more peanut butter. So that's the only reason I've done that. So I've kept the fats down quite low on this one. I also don't find it hard to get my protein in a day. 200, 220 grams is my target today. And I find it super easy to do that. So I don't have a 50, 60 gram of protein breakfast because I know I'm gonna get it in anyway. This is gonna be meal number one. Today's calories and macros are going to be, we're shooting for 220 protein, 70 grams of fats, and 700 grams of carbs. It is gonna be a good day, people. Let's get it. First things first, get the egg whites out of the way. I don't actually mind the taste of egg whites, but they're cold now. I'm just gonna get these in. Then we're on to the bagel, and then we're on to the main thing, which is basically like a dessert. We don't need any of that shell in there, do we? When I eat egg whites and things like this, I don't sit there and think about how it tastes. I think about being, imagine being, right? Imagine just being a muscle, right? Just say you, you're a living bicep, right? It's an active tissue. And egg whites is coming into your system. You're like, oh, egg whites. Do you know what I mean? Your muscles are like crying out for this sort of shit. Just get it in, people. Don't moan about it, just eat it. If you want results, Look, when people talk about results, can you get results when eating kind of what you like? 
Yes, you can get a certain extent amount of results. And what I mean by that is if you want to lose a bit of body fat, then absolutely you can pretty much eat whatever you want, just drop the calories down a little bit and you will lose, scientifically you will lose body fat. However, when people talk about certain type of results they want to achieve, you're not going to get there doing that and I don't care what you say. I will tell my clients this as well when they come and join my coaching academy, I'm like, look, if you want those results, you're sending me pictures of all these guys, there's gonna to have to be some serious sacrifices. And I'm always honest with my clients when they come through to me. I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna get in the shape of your life in 12 weeks time. Because if it was easy to be in the shape of your life in 12 weeks time, we'd all be walking around here like absolute units, wouldn't we? So it's not as easy as people make out. A lot of coaches online say, yes, you can eat whatever you want and you'll, and you'll still get results. Yeah, you'll get results, but it depends on what sort of results you're looking for. So just get on with it. Tastes amazing. Right, I'm gonna eat this up. And I'll catch up with you guys at the next meal. I have just tracked my full day of eating on my fitness pal. So I kind of know roughly where we're going with this and what sort of portion sizes I can eat. Because what normally happens when I'm bulking is I go, right, I'll have a meal there, I'll have a meal there, and I'll have a meal there. And then I completely mess up the evening. Uh, obviously today's a high day, so I've got a lot of carbs to eat up. At the moment, we will be sitting at around 4,450 calories when the goal is 4,310. However, that will just be down to some sort of food choices. That will be, the total would be, there goes the toaster. The total would be 663 grams of carbs, so slightly under. Uh, 73 grams of fats, so three grams over, not a problem. And 239 grams of protein. I always go over protein. But again, what I'm gonna do is stick to it for now, what I've, what I've had laid out, but it may change as I go on, and you will see why. I'm now gonna have, as a snack, I'm gonna have bagel and jam. Just pure carbs, I need it, let's go. So, wholemeal bagel. I've actually gone for 60 grams of jam because I put way too much on, but it's fine. And I've also gone for the full sugar one. This is actually a blueberry jam. Full sugar one, I'll tell you the reason why. Full sugar, it's actually roughly the same amount of carbohydrates in the full sugar jams as it is the sugar-free jams. But, you know, obviously the sugar-free jams are great when you're cutting and stuff, but I just don't know what goes in them. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of sweeteners and stuff in there, and they actually sometimes upset my stomach. If you read the back of the part of a sugar-free jam, it will say, don't exceed more than two tablespoons a day because it can cause like diarrhea basically. So who knows what's going on in there. So full sugar jam, this is going in the hatch um, and then I've got some more work to do and then we're gonna go and train. But before we go and train, I've got to have another meal and another bagel. So we've got a lot to do. Your boy was organized. So we've got white rice in there, we've got greens in there, and we've got chicken in there. Honestly guys, it is so easy for me to just sort of eat chicken, broccoli and rice throughout the day. In actual fact, I've got broccoli, fine green beans and asparagus in there just to mix it up a little bit because you will get bored of broccoli. Uh, in fact, I've been off broccoli for the last six months. I'm not even joking, I just couldn't stand it, but we're back on it. I like the taste of chicken, I like the taste of rice, I like the taste of veg. Mix it all together, you can put some sauce on it if you like. I just cover mine in some pink Himalayan salt put a little bit of a hot sauce over it and you're good to go. For me, food during the day is just fuel to get me through it. I'll make a nice dinner and I'll normally make a nice snack. I mean, tonight, I don't know what we've got for dinner. We've probably got chicken, body and rice again. But um, normally I would always look forward to my nice end meal and my end snack at the end of the day. Um, but honestly, throughout the day, I enjoy this. I actually love the taste of plain white rice. It tastes unbelievable. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. I'm only going to have 100 grams of chicken, 300 grams of rice, and about 50, 60 grams of veg. The reason being, I'm going to go and train about an hour's time. I don't want a lot of protein inside me right now, uh, especially with chicken digesting whilst I'm trying to train. We've got legs, we've got 300 grams of white rice. Let's get it. It's also right about now where I will now have all of my vitamins for the day. So three multivitamins, two fish oils from Ghost. I then also added bee pollen. I just did some research on it and I thought, why not give it a go? Um, and then zinc and magnesium, that just helps with sleep. They say you're supposed to have this in the evening, but on the back here, it doesn't really say when you can and can't take it. I'm just getting zinc and magnesium into my system. And then the turmeric tablets is gonna help with inflammation of the joints. And I don't think I get enough vitamin C in my diet, so I bought these ones off Amazon. 
pretty damn good. Vitamin C, uh, chewable tablets, a thousand milligrams. I think it's one a day and you eat that. It's like a little snack. Um, but yeah, you've got most of this in the multivitamin anyway from Ghost. So you probably don't need it. But however, most of the stuff that you do take in regards to vitamins, you are going to pass through you. So I always go slightly above the recommended dose, but it's up to you what you want to do. Right, now I'm going to get this question. So why am I taking my vitamins later in the day as opposed to in the morning? You have to make sure you've got a decent amount of food into your system before you take these supplements. They will repeat on you if you don't. I actually done it before where I've taken, I think the multivitamin tablets before on an empty stomach and I've just projectile vomited because there's nowhere for it to go. When you eat food, it gets transported to the muscles. Salt helps the transportation of nutrients to the muscles as well. So that's why I add salt to my dishes. Um, so if I'm eating food, plain chicken, plain broccoli, plain rice, um, and then having my vitamins, it's gonna get transported around the body absolutely perfectly. Enough water as well as being drunk, enough salt per meal is being eaten, good nutrients, it's just gonna be more beneficial for me. So I don't like taking them too early in the day. The B pollen tablet really does repeat on me a little bit, so what I try and do is have a meal. I've already ate breakfast, so I've got some food into me already. Now I'm gonna have half of this meal, then take the tablets and have the other half. In my mind, it sits food there, then it sits the vitamin tablets, and then it sits more food. So you shouldn't get much repeating uh, on there. That's why I do it, it works perfectly for me. Trust me, try it, because I think it's an absolute game changer. Let's get them in. I've got to eat first, haven't I? Just remember. That is what we're gonna eat, guys. I actually love it. I know, like Ellie, obviously my girlfriend Ellie cooks some flamboyant meals. She absolutely loves cooking. Um, I genuinely like this meal. I don't know why, I think, I think I, I've already spoken about it at the start of this video. If, if I'm thinking like I'm an actual muscle, and that's getting chucked into me. I'm a happy muscle, do you know what I mean? Anyway, here goes. Mm. It's absolutely beautiful. Anyway, what's that? Meal number two? We had meal one, we had a snack, meal number two. Okay. Right, so we've gone for Legend Pre Bubblicious Carton Candy. Um, unbelievable flavor, don't use it enough, to be honest with you, but we've got two scoops of that baby in there. And then I've gone, I don't normally do this, I normally have um, just plain water when I'm drinking, but today I've gone for BCAAs, and there's a little bit of creatine in there as well, just five grams, and then and then what I'm gonna do is have that and that pre-training, and then these two during my session. So a lot of carbs during my training today, it's gonna help me push through my leg session, it's gonna be an absolute beauty. I'm not taking you guys along with me on the leg session because this is a full day of eating, not training video but I will definitely do a training video for you guys soon. People we're back from the gym that was probably the best leg session as you can probably tell I've ever had well not ever but in the last six months for sure felt absolutely unreal three squares bars while I was training well two while I was training one um, pre and with the banana as well so bare carbs inside me when I was training. The pump was insane. Uh, now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna eat as my post-workout meal, and I'm also gonna cook my meal after my post-workout meal as well, because I'm gonna have that pretty much soon after, so let's get it. Post-workout meal is gonna be another bagel and jam, and then we've also got, again, the chicken, rice, and broccoli. This is gonna be my staple for today because obviously I've cooked a lot of chicken, broccoli, and rice. I've actually added a little bit of sauce to it. This, by the way, not a huge fan of hot sauce, but this one, chipotle flavor, chahula, is that how you say it? It's unbelievable. So that, post-workout meal, and then I'm gonna have that almost instantly after. I always like to keep carbs in and around my training as much as I can. Obviously, when you're hitting 700 grams of carbs in a day, it's gonna be very difficult to do that. Um, however, it was leg day today, which is why I decided to do the high um, carb day, and this is gonna help with recovery massively, so let's get into us. Right, before I tuck in, I wanna to explain to you why I stopped my cut earlier than expected. So I set out to do a four week mini cut. Now, why would you introduce a four week mini cut into a bulk? This is exactly the reason why. During my, uh, my bulk, I was getting super like stagnant with food. I didn't wanna eat anything, I didn't fancy any food. Um, at all, I was kind of off everything. And then what I would tend to do is go, right, what's the time? It's this time, let's try and get a thousand calories in this meal, a thousand calories in that meal, a thousand calories in again another meal. So 
I'd rather, I'd, I'd just eat random stuff, to be fair, throughout the day, trying to hit those all important calories. However, what people don't realize is when you're doing that, is you're not hitting the right amount of macros. So by me going on a little mini cut, I only dropped my calories by about 350, 400, it wasn't huge. I think I went from 3,000, uh, no sorry, 4,200 to around 3,8-ish, something like that. So it wasn't a huge amount, but what that did, it made me go, right, this is my calories, this is my macros. My coach sorted those out for me. And then what I did then was start tracking my food again and working out what foods I needed to eat in order to hit the macros. What people don't understand is it's not all about calories in versus calories out. Yes, the science behind that is calories in versus calories out. Obviously, if you're in a deficit, you're gonna lose body fat. If you're in a surplus, you're gonna gain muscle as long as your training matches that. But for me, you cannot get to the desired physique that you want to get to just by following calories. You have to follow the macros. Hitting a certain amount of macros in a day in regards to carbs, fats, and protein is absolutely vital, especially when you're building muscle. In fact, even when you're trying to lose body fat, you need to make sure the protein's nice and high so you can maintain as much muscle mass as possible. There's no point just hitting the calories, putting yourself in a deficit, training your ass off, not hitting the protein, not hitting enough carbs, not hitting enough fats, because what's gonna happen is a lot of muscle wastage is gonna occur which means by the end of the shred, however long you do, let's say you did 12 weeks of it and not hit a single prop, like a single macro properly, you're not gonna have the physique you want. You need to make sure we're keeping the muscles as full as we possibly can in and around the training, especially so that you're able to push further in your sessions. Normally on leg day, at about 45, 50, 60 minutes in, I am absolutely baked. However, today with the amount of carbs, I was unbelievable, I felt incredible. I even finished the leg session off with four lengths, well, five, well, eight lengths really, because I went there and back, there and back, there and back four times, um, of the sled push, which was unbelievable. Because so, I did one, I thought, I, I'm, I'm flaking here, I'm shattered. But then all of a sudden I had another spurge of energy, which means what happens with taking on those carbs during your training means you're able to push harder in those sessions. And then technically you're adding more resistance on those muscles over that period of time. You do that for 12 weeks, you're gonna maintain as much muscle mass if you're in a deficit, and if you're training to build muscle, you're gonna just grow more muscle mass. So, with all that being said, why did I stop the cut sooner than expected? Realistically, the only reason I introduced this four-week mini cut was to get in a little bit better shape for the summer shredding, for Alphalete summer shredding that was coming up uh, in Birmingham in the UK. However, that got cancelled, as I'm sure you're all aware now. So I don't really need to keep it going. Also, I'm three weeks in, I'm happy with how I look, I'm excited to eat food again, which is why I'm doing these uh, high carb days as well, which has made me think, do you know what? Now let's plan out my meals and stick to the macros and calories that have been set. So that already in my mindset has completely changed. In the first week of me just dropping my calories by 350, 400, I already wanted to eat more food again, which is exactly why you introduce a mini cut when you're bulking. So now I can push on with the calories, probably do another three or four months bulking, get the calories in, get the macros down to a T, and then we'll pick a show and we'll probably get absolutely shredded again. So with that being said, I'm gonna tuck into this food and if you do feel like your bulk is super stagnant, put a four week mini cut in and plan your food. Peace. Let's get it. Oh my God. I love food again. Wow. What would happen normally is I'd sit here, not wanna eat food, even after training, and then just Cramming loads of food in the evening, not good. Absolutely sensational. We're bulking, so don't leave anything. Right, quick drink, or change the palate, and we're tucking in. Catch up with you guys at the next meal. Right, so now that food's in, to help aid digestion, because you know I'm big on that, I'm gonna go for a quick walk, probably about 45 minutes to be fair. I'm just gonna do a round, which I normally do in the mornings. However, this morning I didn't get around to doing that. So I'm gonna go and do that right now, um, just to aid digestion. Right, people, it is now, where's my, where's my watch? My watch is not here. It is nearly seven o'clock, come up to 7 p.m. I've not eaten my dinner yet, I'm gonna eat that after. I'm literally gonna jump in the ice bath now. Now I know they say you shouldn't have an ice bath after training, but this is not directly after training. Um, they say this about resistance training, let me close the door. They say this about resistance training because if you're trying to build muscle, there are some scientific evidence to show that it help, doesn't help with muscle gain, um, etc. However, it's so minimal, it's not worth worrying about. However, it's been about six hours since I trained, so it should be okay. So we're gonna jump in the ice bath, do six minutes tonight, 
and get ready for the night and then just settle up and chill. There's football on tonight, I love watching that. But I love doing this in the evening. Yes, it's good in the morning as well. It feels better in the morning because it feels harder, you build resilience, etc. But in the evening, especially now, I mean, it's quite hot in the evening. If I have an ice bath, I'm cold, obviously, and then it helps me sleep better. So let's go. Honestly, that is absolutely sensational. The way an ice bath makes you feel is like nothing else you've ever felt. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go for a walk actually, another walk, and just get a little bit warmed up. Um, it just helps with the digestion, and I like to get at least sort of anywhere between 16 to 20,000 steps a day. I'm currently on 14, so I'm gonna go and get, get them up a little bit, and then get back and I'll make some food. You're not gonna believe it, people. Meal number five, chicken, broccoli, and rice. Well, there's actually aspar more asparagus and fine green beans than broccoli. But anyway, that, I know my food might be so boring to a lot of people, but I genuinely like the taste of this meal. There's a little bit of chipotle sauce on there, a lot of pink Himalayan salt. I've got some fajita spice on the chicken, and that, to me, is a perfect little meal. I like to have these meals as my base meals, and then my favorite meals in, in and out of the snacks and stuff. Like, the snacks, the amount of snacks I've had today, like the bagels, the jam, the porridges, all that sort of stuff, that's, that's money for me, and then these are my staples. So I've got um, a nice little yogurt bowl after this, which we'll probably have in about an hour's time. So again, I'll catch up with you guys at that meal. But honestly, I'm a happy guy when it comes to this sort of stuff. So I'm gonna eat this now. Hope the football's gonna start in a moment. Um, but yeah, nearly, nearly time for the yogurt bowl. Change of plan. I've actually taken off the yogurt bowl because if I have the yogurt bowl, it's actually gonna give me way too much protein. So instead, I'm just gonna have oats and banana. So we've gone with these Quaker velvety chocolate oats, two sachets, and then banana. Um, and I'm probably gonna have some blueberries as well, some frozen blueberries. So that is gonna go down right now, which means, now if you look at the totals, can you see that? Let me turn the brightness down a touch. Look at the totals, we're looking at 702 grams of carbs, 73 fats, and 229 grams of protein. So I'm nine grams over the protein, two grams over the carbs, and three grams over the fats. So that's pretty damn on. That, my friends, is going to wrap up today's full day of eating. So, got the oats, look at it, just look at this. It looks absolutely sensational. So I have tracked four rice cakes, however, I've only got two left, which is annoying. Um, I've got 40 grams of peanut butter overall there. Uh, and like I said, the calories and macros I will put on the screen now for you to show you exactly what I had uh, today. It's been an unbelievable day. I feel super good. I don't feel full. I don't feel like really sluggish or anything like that. Obviously, I've eaten a lot of carbs. You know, 700 grams of carbs is not easy to hit, especially when you're eating as clean as I am. Um, but going for the walks in between the meals and on my massive leg session, apparently on my Apple Watch, I've burnt 1,360 calories in my leg session, which was unbelievable. So what a day of eating. And all this is gonna be, it's now eight o'clock at night. Where is it? It's now eight o'clock at night, you can see there. So all this food before eight o'clock, which is perfect as well, because I don't want to start slamming in food after nine o'clock and then going to bed. I go to bed at half nine, quarter ten every night. So getting food in nice and early gives it a couple of hours to digest before I go to bed. Absolutely perfecto. Guys, once again, thank you so much for the support on the channel these recent weeks. 
Uh, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I shall see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hey, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I bought those things. <laughs> Babe, I can't talk to you with them on. They work so well. Yeah, I can't talk to them on. We've got to go. Oh my god, my, I'm actually. Bye. What's she doing?